Hello everyone and welcome. Adaptive thresholds in performance monitoring have become popular recently in the last two years or so. If you don't know what they are, in this video I will give you an overview. If used properly, adaptive thresholds can serve many end goals. I will talk about that a little bit in this video. My name is Ishan Kapoor and I'm a tech evangelist with Riverbed. So let's dive right in and let's begin. All right. Uh, before we get started, I just wanted to showcase that dynamic thresholds or adaptive thresholds are getting popular out there. This is an example from the Azure monitoring website, and they proudly boast that they're using dynamic thresholds and machine learning to recognize patterns. So the bottom line is uh, it is an industry-wide phenomena. People are using patterns uh, matching and uh, other machine learning techniques to figure out uh, what's happening with the metrics, uh, and Riverbed uses it as well. So with that said, let's step into what these dynamic thresholds and ad adaptive thresholds really are and go from there. So let's first examine what is the, the difference between adaptive and static thresholds. And this uh, screen in front of us right now is, uh, is comparing both of them. Uh, at the bottom, if you notice, uh, there is just a, uh, a, a single dotted line that's uh, going through um, the chart uh, all across the time axis, and that is a uh, static threshold. Uh, it's basically a value of 90%. Anytime the value of the metric being monitored in, goes beyond 90%, we consider that a violation. Anything, anytime it goes under, it's, it's considered normal. Um, and so it's static, predefined, and just goes all the way through. And for some metrics, this actually makes really good sense. But now let's focus on the uh, color chart, color chart um, at the top, where the dark blue color is actually the metric. It fluctuates quite, quite a bit, as you can see over time. However, the dynamic threshold here is in play, and you can see the green band is what follows the uh, it, what would consider what is considered the normal range. It goes all the way through the metric, and any time the blue line crosses the green band, it's considered a violation, or it's, it's considered that is an abnormal behavior. The green band is actually the, the the normal range that is figured out by baselining, by the tool itself, by baselining your metric going past uh, 12 hours or a day or you know to, to recognize the typical pattern. So the green band is, is not entirely something that we have defined. We've defined some parameters for it, but the actual threshold is figured out automatically by uh, the tool itself. And, and obviously anytime the metric crosses that green band and goes into the uh, the highlighted uh, yellow range, uh, it's considered a an alert. Uh, so that's the difference between the static and uh, dynamic thresholds. Now let's step into uh, how you can actually configure uh, dynamic uh, thresholds or adaptive thresholds in Riverbed products. So we arrive first in AppResponse and any alerts or notifications in AppResponse First, start with creating a new policy. So here we are. I've just created a, um, on the page to create a new policy. We're going to pick the adaptive type, obviously, and then move on next to uh, the various grouping. So AppResponse has all these groupings. You can pick anything to monitor and create an adaptive policy. I'm going to pick application, and I'm going to, in fact, pick the auto-recognize HTTP application for my use case here. And let's move on next. Uh, which metric would you like to measure? So you should typically see all the available metrics for app any application, any, any auto-recognize applications. I'm going to actually pick the packet traffic uh, for my use case here. And immediately as you pick the metric, you're, you're presented with a screen for the um, uh, calculation. This is actually the most important screen here. And you can notice that the deviation factor boxes right now are empty. And watch what happens when I just click on uh, this link here. It goes through and automatically populates what the min minor, major, and critical deviation factors uh, should be and it rec recognizes the tiny peaks and the big peaks and figures out that they are normal based on the last 12 hours. I can also expand it to one day. It's going to go back much further and figure out what the peaks and valleys look like and uh, try to normalize that behavior. Uh, what you can also do is uh, you can go and change this and let's see what happens when I change it to four. Uh, you'll see that the four 
uh, shrunk the green range and it also brought in a lot of these vertical lines. These vertical lines actually mean that if you make your packet traffic metric um, dynamic threshold more sensitive, the minor threshold will be hit in all these points. So it kind of back tests your parameters and tells you how much alert noise will it generate or how many alerts will it generate at which point it would have generated had it been active for the last one day or so. And of course, um, the, uh, the this is almost like a noise floor and you can say, I'd, I'd like to see it uh, the, the uh, uh, in a little bit of deviation trigger um, to actually trigger an alert. Um, and you can also go down here and say compare live data against the behavior from one day ago uh, or one week ago, which means it's going to take 24 hours either from yesterday or from, for example, Monday or Tuesday of last week, whichever day you're, you're setting this alert on. And then also, you know, how much do you want a consistent um, violation to last before it sends uh, an alert out. So this is actually the key screen. I'm going to skip some of the nitty gritty of what it takes to create a new policy, but I wanted to showcase what adaptive thresholds are, where are they important within app response. And this is actually the, the busiest, the most important screen. So go ahead and uh, play with this on your side and let us know your feedback. But the adaptive thresholds in app response are pretty effective. They do give you a lot of good data. As you can see, the UI itself is, you know, pretty impressive when it gives you feedback on how busy this alert would have been had it been enabled. So that was it for app response. So let's move on to the next bit. Next up, we have Net Profiler. And in NetProfiler, the quickest and easiest way to start get started with adaptive or dynamic thresholds is go under definitions, policies, and just go under performance and availability uh, tab. Uh, you can also set up adaptive thresholds in service, but that take that's a little more complex. So the 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 entry level performance and um, and availability is the tab to go to. And as you can see, I've already defined something here and um, the status is being reported as ready monitoring. When you freshly define a policy, it will be uh, observing or it will be baselining initially. So let's go ahead and see what this is all about. So what, what, once you've created this, you can go back in and click on tune and this will give you the exact same um, menu and exact same uh, prompts or end configuration page as you would when you're creating a brand new policy. So you'll notice it looks somewhat similar to what we saw in app response. There's the tolerance sigmas. You can uh, check mark whether you want to detect spikes or detect, detect dips only. Uh, the key point to notice is that the metrics where you can apply these dynamic uh, thresholds are already pre-selected for you. So these are the metrics that we have curated and made available for these for this particular type of monitoring. So if you're looking for an application or a host, and we'll look at all the other possibilities as well. But here you go. It it also goes ahead and shows you a somewhat back test, similar to what we saw, saw in app response. The difference is here, it actually does require to proactively go and look for data for the next, uh, for the 12 hours. So what that means is once you've defined a policy and let it run for a day or two days, only then you'll start seeing that chart when you're here for the first time, this will be blank. And similarly for uh, the other metrics as well. But as you tweak and change your sigmas and let it run for a day or so, you'll start seeing this show up. Now, what are the other uh, types of uh, adaptive uh, threshold policies that you can define? Let's have a look, I'll hit cancel here. And as you can see, this is uh, application availability, but you can also do application availability policy. That's what we have, link congestion policy. So infrastructure wise, if you're looking at several links, this can be used to automatically tune and figure out what is the typical behavior pattern and what are, what are the outliers. Uh, link outage policy, so links going down and application performance uh, policy. So um, application, application performance will actually give you slightly different metrics. Uh, based on what you pick over here, you'll, you'll receive different uh, metrics to tune. So let's give an example. I'm going to pick an application performance policy. So this will give you a more 
performance monitoring centric, right? New connections, active connections, average common dura connection duration, response time, so on and so forth. So these metrics are curated. They do change depending on which type of policy you pick. But once you've done that, you can come in here and uh, tune or retune some of the settings uh, later at some point. Uh, however, if you wanted to see how well this policy is actually doing, we can click on the view SLO report. It will tell you how many violations have occurred in the past and how effective is this policy and whether it needs tuning or not. So as an example here, this is showing you the, um, the current versus typical traffic scene for HTTP and the total number of typical hosts. So um, you can see that there, there, there are some outliers that our tool has figured out where the traffic patterns were not like the uh, previously observed uh, ranges, and it did consider them, it did consider them normal because it fell, it it was well within the normal range as per the defined parameters, uh, but it did deviate from previous data. So um, I, again, this is um, a really good way to verify and validate before you actually open up the alerts to the rest of your team. And this is uh, how you configure and uh, verify your dynamic uh, and adaptive alerts in policies in Net Profiler. All right, so we've just seen a short demo about adaptive thresholds and gone through some really basic steps on how to configure adaptive thresholds in Rebet products really quickly. If you had to take one thing away from this video, it is that adaptive thresholds are really good in recognizing patterns. When tuned properly, they can serve many end goals, not just performance related, but also perhaps security related. So this doesn't qualify the tool as a security focused product, but it's always better to have more knowledge, slightly more knowledge about your metrics and your network. See you next time, bye-bye.